soldiers present submissions to court over mutiny case. 443 teachers fail to submit documents to payroll division. And former NRL star Matt Bowen to lead 2016 True Guy Fun Run. This is National MTV News with Lorraine Gabina. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Saturday's news. Eight of the 12 PNGDF soldiers convicted for mutiny told the military court in Bomana yesterday that they were affected because of administrative issues within their headquarters in Port Mosby. The convicts said while they accept the court's judgment, their deployment to Como was one of the worst operations because they were denied incidental allowances for over six months. They made these submissions before Justice Panel Mogish. Each of the 12 convicted soldiers told the military court they were sorry for their actions and asked the court for leniency. Major Benjamin Edimani, the soldier in charge of the Como operation, was the first to speak. He told the court he had taken full responsibility for the actions of all his soldiers and apologized to the families affected, including the defense force. However, the major said in his experience as a military officer, he had never come across an operation where there was no support from the defense force. Similar sentiments were expressed by other convicts. The soldiers were charged for mutiny in December 2015 after they failed to abort the operation in Como, following directives from their commander to return to Port Mosby. On June 1st, they were found guilty on two counts of the four mutiny charges. The court refused the application for the extension of their bails after conviction and they were remanded at the Bomana jail. Yesterday, their lawyer, Captain Dixon Wesley, submitted that each soldier should be given less than three years imprisonment because their case was not the worst of mutiny cases compared to other mutiny cases in the history of the Defense Force. However, lawyers representing the Defense Force objected to the submissions stating that the soldiers were guilty and must be imprisoned for 25 years. A judgment on their penalty will be handed down by Justice Mogis next Friday. Takla Gunga, National MTV News. A police accommodation at Tassion Barracks in Port Moresby was burnt yesterday evening. This incident has left residents homeless and properties with thousands lost in the fire. Eric Harupma spoke to the affected families today. MTV arrived at the scene in the aftermath of the fire which had engulfed duplex at Tassion Barracks. Temporary tents were erected in front of the burnt building to accommodate two families who were victims of fire. They said the fire started as a result of an electrical fault at this part of the building. Sergeant Mayayo and family lost all their properties in the blaze. While Sergeant Martin Fari, who was present in the adjoining flat, managed to save his properties. I advised them to broke the fiber, the wall, to remove all my things because the smoke was in, a, in it. So this is where I, 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 all my things are safe. Residents said following the incident, attempts to inform the fire service were unsuccessful after several calls. They said NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Chief Inspector Benjamin Turi, who is also a resident there, confirmed the incident and said police will address this issue. Eric Arupma, National MTV News. The burning of vehicles and looting of UPNG buildings this week is now a police matter. In a statement received by MTV News, Deputy Police Commissioner and Chief of Operations Jim Andrews says forensic officers are now on campus to investigate the matter. Andrews says buildings were burnt while an unknown number of university staff, including security officers, were injured in the latest spate of violence. The Chief of Operations says police will now maintain strong presence on campus for protection of lives and state assets. The Department of Higher Education is working towards ensuring PNG obtained degrees are recognized around the world. 
Addressing the second department's all heads meeting today, Secretary Professor David Kavanamur said a quality audit of the country's universities in 2013 showed all universities scoring less than half of the required score. The audit had 13 standards which were used to assess the universities. The score was that uh, our state university scored about 29% of the 13 standards and the two private universities, uh, the one were in Pacific Adventist uh, University, scored about 30%. To gain international recognition, PNG degrees will have to make it onto the Pacific Qualifications Framework first and then to the Asia Pacific Qualifications Framework. Kavanamur said they need all the help they can get to ensure this happens. Of the 500 uh, scholarships that we gave for Academic Excellence Scholarships category, AES, uh, by 2015, we were only able to retain 30 out of the 500. So. This, he says, is an indication of a broader issue. Um, the majority of our students are not taking science and mathematics-based courses um, in, in, the, in, the, in the high schools. And, and so from 2010, 57% um, uh, of our students were taking major math or math A. By 2012, that dropped to 27 percent. Another plan to streamline PNG universities with the world is to focus more on learning hours. So we say that uh, 10 learning hours uh, should be equivalent to one credit point. Uh, 4,800 uh, learning hours is equivalent to a degree. So between 4,800 to 6,000 learning hours, it, you can obtain a degree. He said if universities become more efficient in administering learning hours, they can cut down on the number of years to obtain a degree. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. There are also plans to formalize arrangements for more Papua New Guineans to study at the University of South Pacific. Higher Education Secretary Professor David Kavanamur said documents are yet to be finalized for this. But current plans are for 1,000 Papua New Guineans to secure a place at USP. You're watching National MTV News. More local stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. 443 new graduate teachers in the country have failed to submit several important documents for their eligibility in the payroll system. This was revealed by Acting Education Secretary Dr. Uke Kombra. Dr. Kombra says that all necessary documents must now be submitted to the Education Department's Payroll Division. The Acting Education Secretary's call follows the Circular 17 of 2016 of May 31, sent to all the provincial authorities to implement. This 443 teacher graduates failed to submit several documents including copies of qualification, teacher registration certificate, duly completed teacher record of appointments and copies of grade 10 and 12 certificates. Dr. Combra emphasized they need to be on the payroll and the documents must be received by the payroll division this month. In addition, new commencement teachers who have graduated from other universities and teaching and meeting requirements are also requested to submit appropriate documents if they have not been receiving their fortnightly salaries. List of these new graduate teachers not on the payroll was sent to appropriate schools and provincial authorities at the beginning of this month. Dr. Combra has called on all provincial education advisors, teacher in charge, head teachers, managers and principals of the elementary primary and secondary schools, including vocational centers, to forward their new graduate teachers relevant documents to the Education Department. Fabian Harklitz, National MTV News. Bougainville Affairs Minister and Regional MP Joe Lera says that building the human resource capacity is important for the future. This was the message delivered at the second graduation of the International Training Institute, Kokopau Branch in Bougainville. 
Minister Lera said education is one major priority under his vision and development pillars aimed to improve Bougainville's human resource in three categories of professionals, skilled workforce and a literate society. ITI Managing Director Kumaran Sentival acknowledged Lera's continued support in providing school fee assistance for students. He said ITI will introduce diploma courses this year. The 53 students graduated with certificate courses in computing, human resource management and accounting. District funds should not be released in the absence of a political leader in the seat. Member for Medang and Minister for Transport and Infrastructure, Nixon Duban, said this yesterday when presenting the acquittal reports for his electorate. Speaking from experience, Mr. Duban said it was unfair to be presenting some acquittal reports which he has no knowledge of how much money was received and how much was spent. An election petition saw Duban ousted in 2014 and Medang Open was left without an MP. The application and administration of the DSIP and DSG funds were left entirely at the hands of the district administration. While Mr. Duban said acquittal reports were important for accountability, he also added that for expectations to be placed on him to present acquittal reports for 2014 was unfair and unjustified as he was not in office and therefore had no knowledge of how much money was received and how much was spent during that year. When you don't have a political leadership, the district is placed at high risk. Bureaucrats who are running the district without the control of a political leadership do not take into consideration what you as a member of parliament have campaigned for and have also uh, identified as pressing issues for the electorate to prioritize your funding. He said to avoid similar problems for other districts in the future, Minister Duban said DSIP and DSG funds should not be released in the absence of a political leader in office. Uh, so in the future, I think it is important that funds are not released to districts who are going through such situations. They should not be allowed to touch any development funds until a member of parliament is in place to balance the planning and, and disbursement of development funds. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. And we'll have Chukai Sports next. All the details after the break. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Former NRL star Matt Bowen will be, at the, will be the special guest at tomorrow's Trukai Fun Run event. Bowen, who played for North Queensland Cowboys, made an appearance at the Vision City Mall today, signing autographs and taking pictures. Yesterday, he spoke to students at Babaroko Primary School on the importance of healthy living and also displayed the World Cup, which the Cowboys won in February this year. Bowen's arrival in Port Moresby yesterday afternoon sparked much hype as he was greeted by a small crowd at Jackson's International. Welcome the Cowboys to Port Moresby. From there, the former North Queensland Cowboys fullback was whisked away on his first official duty, encouraging young school children on the benefits of being healthy and focused in class. You know, uh, you know message today is, you know, obviously, you know, you can always say no to drugs uh, and bullying. You know, it's not part of any um, any school. Or, you know, if you've been bullied, I'm sure you get something to talk to. But if you are a bullier, stop it. So, you know, it's been... For Bowen, however, his days on the paddock are now gone. Instead, focusing on community awareness programs, and in this case, as ambassador for Truka Industries. In departing, the former Delhi M recipient commended his former Origin teammates after their rousing defeat of New South Wales in Game Two on Wednesday. See why they won it the last. You know, 10 years out of 11, um, yeah, so uh, it's going to be a long time yet um, until that uh, current crop, you know, retire, but saying that, mate, it, it, it's been great. 
Bowen will be at the forefront of the Chukai Fun Run, scheduled to kick start at 5.30 a.m. tomorrow, simultaneously across multiple centers across Papua New Guinea, with ARB's own run to be held a week later. Jeremy Moggy, National, MTV Sports. And as part of its contribution towards sports, national flag carrier New Guinea presented Fun Run t-shirts to several schools in the nation's capital. Two primary schools, Holy Rosary and St. Peter's, were the proud recipients. Marketing manager Nori Maniana presented the Fun Run shirts to the excited students in preparation for tomorrow's event. PNG Olympics Committee Secretary General Alvita Rapila is urging the public to support the Trukai Fun Run, which will start early at the Sergeon Guys Stadium. She particularly applauded the children who make the numbers at the annual event. I'd like to encourage everyone for their cooperation, the public's cooperation. And, and it's an event where we have a lot of children that come out and participate. Um, quite a number of them actually do. 5Ks before they actually do the actual fun run because they're making their way there, walking there um, as early as 3 a.m. in the morning. So, you know, the interest is very high. The numbers are increasing every year. Um, and it's really good that, you know, we, we see a lot of uh, children and families come out and take part, take part in this event. The PNG Olympics Committee is hoping to send six sporting codes to represent PNG at this year's Summer Olympics in Brazil. The athletes are training overseas while our elite swimmers are attending the Oceania Championships in Fiji. Apart from the athletes who have qualified, PNG is yet to confirm participation in boxing and weightlifting. PNG's preparations are still continuing with few more athletes yet to qualify for the Olympic Games. Some of the athletes who have qualified are Ryan Pinney, Toya Whistle and duo Samantha and Maximilian Kassman. We also have um, a weightlifter, Moria Baru. Hopefully he will be confirmed you know, given that he's ranked in the top 10 in the world um, in weightlifting. National coach for PNG Taekwondo, Edward Kassman, said two athletes representing PNG at the Olympic Games in the sport of Taekwondo will continue their training until August. Meanwhile, PNG Olympics Committee Secretary General Lobita Rapila said Papua New Guinea athletes are well taken care of before they can face the rest of the world in Brazil. And we're waiting for tripartite placings uh, approved by the International Olympic Committee, um, possibly uh, for boxing as well as weightlifting. So fingers crossed, hopefully we can get a few more athletes qualified uh, through the tripartite uh, placings as well. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. That ends True Guys Sports. The weather report is next. Stay with us for the details. Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. Your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. In the southern region, occasional light showers in Port Moresby, squally rain in Daru, rain with occasional showers in Alutau, cloudy with occasional light showers and drizzles in Kerma, and in Popandeta, light rain and drizzles with occasional thunderstorms. In the Momase region, Lei, Medang and Wiwek expecting showers with occasional thunderstorms. In Vanimo, showers and rain with occasional thunderstorms. And in the New Guinea Islands, chances of some rain in Lorengau, in Buka, rain with thunderstorms, occasional showers in Kavien, Rabaul expecting showers with occasional thunderstorms, and in Kimbe, showers with occasional thunderstorms and chances of developing rain. And in the Highlands region, all centres are expecting rain with fog. And that's the news, sports and weather for Saturday, the 25th of June 2016. From all of us here at MTV, you have a pleasant evening. Good night.